Yo, what up guys, Mere Cat, and today I want to talk about Disney Star Wars because it's a strange phenomenon, you know what I mean? It's been almost a year since The Rise of Skywalker came out, and you know, you still see people here and there talking about uh, Rise, of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker in particular, but you know, Disney Star Wars remains as contentious as ever, especially with the upcoming, like, the impending release of, uh, what's it called? Uh, the impending release of High Republic is, uh, definitely something that's been talked about a lot, and I imagine when that book series, comic book series, whenever that whole project ends up getting, you know, more traction, and it's getting closer and closer to release, and even after, like, post-release, it's probably going to garner a lot of attention. It's probably going to garner a lot of um, both positive attention and negative attention, you know? The two sides of the fence, the ones who are always fighting each other on Twitter, always spitting on each other in, like, YouTube comments. You know exactly who I'm talking about. There's the one side, and then there's the other side. But um, Star Wars is one of those things that's been really special to me for the majority of my life. I say majority, but I've only been a fan of Star Wars for around half my life. I didn't um, see a Star Wars movie all the way through until I was like 13, 14 years old. And I'm 26 now, so, you know, about half my life. Um, but I remember, I remember thinking when I first saw a Star Wars movie, uh, when I first saw the first Star Wars movie all the way through, I remember I borrowed a VHS from one of my high school teachers, and I watched Star Wars all the way through. It was pre, it was pre special editions, you know, theatrical cut, three theatrical cut, VHS. I think it was from like the late air, like late eighties, early nineties, VHS release, like super, like a that's. I wonder if he still has that tape because that's like a super important piece of media. But yeah, I watched that movie and I thought it was fantastic. I was like, this is wonderful. Why did I wait so long to watch this movie? And you know, immediately after that, I, I, had, I had to watch the other ones. I convinced my mom. I said, hey, mom, I, I would like to watch more Star Wars movies. I saw Revenge of the Sith on a store, like a store shelf, the DVD. And I was like, mom, it's like. Um, we gotta we we gotta get this DVD, you know. I I really want to watch this movie. Can we get it? And so she got it for me, and I used to watch Revenge of the Sith all the time. Me, my brother, and my sister. Um, my brother and my sister. That's still their favorite Star Wars movie, you know. And my personal favorite is it's kind of a cliche now, but my favorite Star Wars movie is uh, Episode Five. You know, Empire Strikes Back, but we used to watch Revenge of the Sith all the time, and we loved it. It was so good. It was so quotable, and the CGI was on point, you know, for the time. Hasn't really aged well, but for the time that it was released, uh, the CGI held up really well. And I just thought it was so good. Even to this day, I can't quote it as well as I used to be able to, but even to this day, I can still you know, replay that scene on Mustafar right before the big climactic battle, uh, word for word in my head. I can still quote that word for word. That's how many times we watched that movie. It was so amazing. So, of course, and then I ended up watching, you know, the other Star Wars movies, in the fr like the other movies in the franchise um, along the way, you know? So, you know, having watched all six Star Wars movies, I was, I just felt this emptiness, you know, um, I was like, I need more Star Wars, I need it, you know, this movie series is finished, I need more content, that's how I ended up watching The Clone Wars, which is a show that I watched when it originally aired in 2008, but um, quickly fell off of after I think the first season, so I decided, hey, I'm gonna catch up on Clone Wars, so I started watching Clone Wars, and oh my god, that show is so good, and when it's great, it's really freak. It's really great. I was watching Clone Wars, you know, rewatching the Star Wars movies, especially Revenge of the Sith and uh, Empire Strikes Back. I was rewatching those religiously, like once a week. I would watch those movies. I swear, there was a Star Wars TV marathon on Spike. I would say, hey, I would say to my brother and sister, hey, listen, this is there's a Star Wars marathon on. You gonna watch it with me? They were like, no. 
because, you know, they had their fill, you know, uh, they've seen it a couple of times. They had their fill, you know, but I couldn't get enough. I, I, I was insatiable. It's crazy. So in 2012, the announcement that Disney had bought Lucasfilm and was making more Star Wars live action films. You. Mm, I couldn't believe my fucking ears. Let's go. That's how I was. I was so. Mm, I was so excited. Oh, just thinking about that raw emotion that I had when I found out that news. It's, uh, it just gets me so hyped. All over again, it gets me hyped. And you know what? I waited. I, I, I couldn't stand waiting. But I waited. I patiently waited. Every single little bit of news I followed. Casting call, like casting calls. Casting announcements. You know, behind the scenes photos. Who was directing it? J.J. Abrams? I love J.J. Abrams. I love Star Trek. I love Star Trek 2009. You know? I know a lot of people hate that movie. I personally like that movie a lot. Cloverfield. I used to watch Alias. I used to love that TV show Fringe that he co-created. I loved, loved Super 8. That was like one of my all-time favorite movies for a hot minute. Sounds like it's directed by J.J. Abrams? A Star Wars buff? A Star Wars fan? Who's such a fan of Star Wars that he modified Star Trek to make it align more with his love for Star Wars? <laughs> you couldn't believe how excited I was to hear that news. They're making new Star Wars, and J.J. Abrams is at the helm of the mo of, of like the first movie in the new trilogy. Yes, and you know what? 2014. I remember this day like so clearly. Uh, I can't remember the specific date though, but I know it was late December, right? I was at my aunt's house. We were having Christmas dinner, and I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my phone, and it says. Star Wars trailer, episode seven. They announced the name and they were like, you know, that's the trailer where they announced the name of the movie. You know, this is about a year before the movie actually released in 2015. So new Star Wars trailer. I watch it and it was the best thing ever. I don't think I've ever been that hyped before or since watching that trailer. And then I saw the they revealed the title of the movie, The Force Awakens. I was like, oh my God, what could that mean? What could that mean? And I wasn't the only one thinking that way. The number of YouTube videos and articles that came out online, speculating about the title, speculating about the story, you know, looking at these new characters, these new, this new legacy for Star Wars, it was amazing. And then the movie came out in 2015 and I loved it. I, f oh my God. God, I love that movie so much. To this day, I still love Force Awakens. You know, you cannot take that away from me. Force Awakens is a fucking great film, okay? What I neglected to mention earlier on, you know, I knew there was a new trilogy, but the fact that they were making additional Star Wars movies that were gonna release in between the trilogy films, Oh my God, I thought that was such a cool concept. Six new Star Wars films in six years? God, yes. Yes, give all, I want all of that. In the end, they only made five, but you know, it's okay, you know, it's okay. Six months after the release of The Force Awakens, I think the first trailer for Rogue One drops and Rogue One looks different. It's Star Wars, but it's not at the same time. It's fresh, it's inventive. It has a whole different tone than any of the saga films. And I'm down for it. I am so down for it. I saw that movie in 2013, I mean, I saw that movie in 2016 and it lived up to the hype, in my personal opinion. Actually, if I were to, if I were to, if I were to rank all the Star Wars movies, I think Rogue One would be second for me behind Empire. And that's the truth. <sighs> Around the time that Rogue One gets released, there's also a trailer for Episode Eight, And we find out that Episode Eight is gonna be called The Last Jedi. And once again, people are speculating, what could the title mean? Where are these new characters that we just fell in love with gonna go? What is this movie gonna be about? Ryan Johnson is making the movie? I didn't know who Ryan Johnson was. And then the movie releases in 2017 and the, oh my fucking God, the entire fucking fandom 
exploded into a million pieces, fractured in an instant. It's really funny to think about now, but I remember thinking, oh my God. I came out of The Last Jedi and I was like, that was pretty good. That was, that was pretty good. Okay. Admittedly, I wasn't as satisfied with The Last Jedi as I was with Force Awakens. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. That was, that was okay. Little did I know what was getting ready to happen to the Star Wars fandom. Disney Star Wars was about to become public enemy number one. Remember earlier in the video when I said there are two specific groups of fans who are always at each other's throats online? You got this one and you got this one. I'm not going to name drop anybody. But if you've been on YouTube in the past couple of years, you know exactly who the fuck I'm talking about, okay? But, um, you know, I was like, okay, that was, uh, that was, a, that was, that was okay. That was okay. That was okay. Last Jedi, I thought that was okay, initially. Now I'm a little bit meh on it, but at first I thought it was a pretty solid film. Um, that's one of those films that gets worse on rewatch. Before Last Jedi is released, we start hearing about production issues that are going on on the Han Solo film. A film which, I'll admit, nobody asked for and nobody seemed to be interested in. You know? Originally it was going to be directed... Wait, who the fuck was it going to be directed by? Phil Lord and Chris Miller? How could I forget something like that? Anyway... So the original directors dropped out of the project over creative differences and they got Ron Howard to finish the film. Fun fact, Ron Howard's daughter went on to direct an episode of The Mandalorian, episode four specifically of the first season. And that actually is like in my top three favorite episodes of The Mandalorian. So uh, Bryce, if you're watching this, you're, you're a fantastic director. I love Bryce Dallas Howard so much. Ever since Spider-Man 3, man. And then the release of Solo, a Star Wars film, uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, gets uh, pushed up by six months. So instead of releasing in December of 2018, it's now coming out in May? It's now coming out in May of 2018. That's a little bit weird. And I think that was the first Star Wars movie in a in a while that I hadn't seen. Yeah. I saw all three previous Star Wars movies in theaters, but I didn't go see Solo. And you know, you know, Solo lost money, as that one guy likes to say. But, you know, I went back and I watched it, and it's a pretty solid movie. I'm not even going to lie. It's pretty solid. It's kind of sad that it lost money at the box office because... You know, it's a pretty competently made film. You wouldn't even know that there were production issues. After that, you know, the fandom really started to fall apart. And Disney Star Wars, like I said, became the enemy of the quote-unquote true fans. And then the quote-unquote true fans became the enemy of the quote-unquote true, true fans. And it became an absolute shit show online. It was in entirely entertaining to watch i was laughing my ass off oh my god you stupid motherfuckers why the fuck are you arguing over star wars just watch the movies you like but um you know i still held out a little bit of hope i was like okay last jedi not really a incredible follow-up to the force awakens but it has some interesting ideas the idea that anybody can be a <laughs> now i gotta do a second sync because my phone ran out of space in the middle of my sentence. So, pop. Even though The Last Jedi was pretty meh, uh, it has some interesting ideas. Like the idea that you don't have to be of special blood or birthright in order to be a hero, I think is a really good message. It just could have been handled well. Like, it could have been handled better. And so you look at certain people who deride The Last Jedi as like the film that killed the franchise. Um, what do they usually focus on? Admiral Holdo, right? Canto Bite, and the character assassination of Luke Skywalker. And those are the main things that really pissed off fans of Star Wars, like long-term, long-time fans of Star Wars. By the same token, that's also the thing that other long-time fans of Star Wars praised as an innovation. So, like, whose side do you take? You know? 
I'm of the personal opinion that you shouldn't take anybody's side but your own. But that's not how the world works. So despite The Last Jedi being a meh film and solo production issues and eventually losing money in the box office, I held out hope that episode 9 was going to be, you know, it was going to be the movie that just brought the franchise back, right? They even put J.J. Abrams back on the franchise. They should have made him direct all three movies. Although, I was interested in Colin Trevorrow's version of episode 9. But yeah, they brought J.J. Abrams back. You know, he might be able to close this one out. He might be able to make it work. He might be able to roll with the changes that Ryan Johnson introduced in The Last Jedi. Instead, he spent half his movie rolling back the changes that Ryan Johnson made and then trying to move forward with what his original plan was, if there was a plan in the first place, which I have it on good authority, there was not. But I think it's pretty obvious that there are a couple of things that J.J. Abrams intended to be true from the get-go. One is Finn being Force-sensitive. He has two lightsaber fights in The Force Awakens. And in both of those, he holds his own for a, a decent amount of time. I can't remember if he won the fight with the Stormtroopers. It's been like a year since I saw The Force Awakens. And then the fight against Kylo Ren, obviously, where he got defeated by getting slashed in the back. Which should have been a grievous wound, but he was perfectly fine at the beginning of The Last Jedi. It's kind of, it kind of doesn't make any sense. The second thing I think J.J. always intended from the beginning was for Rey to be powerful because she's linked through the Force to Ben Solo. Ben Solo's powerful, therefore Rey is powerful. What they could have done, though, instead of making her an all-encompassing, like, all-rounder, you know, you could have done something like, you know, what that one scene in The Rise of Skywalker where she's trying to pull down the ship that Chewie's on, and she ends up shooting force lightning and blowing up everybody in the ship, including supposedly Chewbacca. You know, that should have been something that was included in The Last Jedi, for example. To show that even though she's very powerful in the force, her power is very unfocused and she still needs training. Rise of Skywalker was uh, the first movie in the Star Wars franchise where I walked out of the theater like... I could have waited to see that. And it was really sad because I just, I love Star Wars and I love loving Star Wars. And to be honest, it feels a little bit shitty to be so blase on the Disney Star Wars properties. Wait. Disney Star Wars properties? I meant Disney Star Wars movies because The Mandalorian is sick as fuck, bro. And I guess Rebels is kind of good too. I don't know. It's just kind of, um, I don't know. It's kind of melancholy, right? To be so in love with this franchise that you, you know, that kind of raised you into adulthood and then see it kind of sputter out like a, uh, like a, like a weak firecracker instead of going out in a nuclear explosion of fire and ash, it just like that. And, um, I really hope that Disney gets their shit together soon because I will gladly support a Star Wars movie that looks good. The reason I really wanted to make this video is because there aren't a lot of opinions on YouTube from people who aren't, you know, either like paid journalists or part of the fandom menace from like neutral ish people. Like fucking Mauler hates Disney Star Wars. That man's a fucking, he needs to, somebody, somebody buy Mauler some bubbles. Okay, buy him a bubble machine. I had this perspective on Disney Star Wars and I feel like it could have been way better. I don't think there is a such thing as a bad Star Wars movie. Like, how many of there are? How many of them are there now? Like 11? 11 Star Wars movies? And they pretty much all range from fucking phenomenal to eh. But none of them, in my opinion, are really bad. You know what I mean? But I do think that the, the latest Disney Star Wars movies were disappointing. Especially after they had such a strong running start with The Force Awakens. And I know a lot of people like to call that movie a rehash. But sometimes you need to get your you need to dip your toes in before you jump in. You know what I mean? At least that's my perspective. But 
you know, with episode seven, they had so much pretend, they had so much potential, and it feels kind of like Ryan Johnson ruined Star Wars. Seriously, I'm not hating on Ryan Johnson. He's a decent director. Okay, he's a decent director. But the main thing that wrecked episode nine was the fact that episode eight completely destroyed everything that episode seven set up. I mean, he was so keen on not continuing the story that was there, but making his own story that he basically wrecked any chance that episode nine had of being great. I don't know. I just feel like if episode eight hadn't gone the way it did, then people would have a lot like a lot more of a positive perspective on the Disney era of Star Wars movies. So yeah, I don't hate Ryan Johnson, but he did ruin Star Wars, at least for now. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this, discuss, if you like this video, hit the like button. I would also like to see a little bit of discussion in the comment section below. I know this is a very saucy topic. I really wanna see what everybody's perspective is, so make sure to leave a comment, make sure to hit like, and make sure to subscribe so you can see more content from this channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out.